Okay, hi everyone. Let's take a look at this least squares problem. It's problem 3-44. Caribbean Holiday provides charter cruises in the Virgin Islands. Lois Martin, the owner, wants to understand how her labor costs change per month. She recognizes that the cost is neither strictly fixed nor strictly variable. She has gathered the following information and has identified two potential predictive bases number of charters and gross receipts. Okay, and then with the information that you see in this table here, we need to come up with the least squares method of de using the least squares method, we need to develop a labor cost formula based on number of charters and gross receipts. And I'm going to show you using Excel a couple ways to do this. Okay, let me slide down now. I've put in the data here so we have it to work with. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is show the graphic way, which is the way I tend to put these together. Um, what I'm going to do is just highlight this data right here. We'll do number of charters first. Now, what you need to understand is um, this is the x, um, the independent variable, uh, and so is gross receipts. So why don't I put an x at the beginning here so that it's labeled. Okay, we're going to test e each of those, and y is the um, dependent variable. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab this here, highlight that, and I'm going to go up to data. Uh, I'm sorry, up to insert. Now, I know you don't see this on the screen. I'm going up to insert off of the Excel um, ribbon bar and I'm going to click on the scatter diagram. You know what? Maybe I ought to move this up so you can see it. Okay, so it is on home and then you go to insert and then you grab the scatter diagram. Okay, now that'll bring a pop-up screen. Now I'm going to bring it back down to where we were. Okay, and, and it's going to put a graph on the screen so we'll just put it off to the side here. And what I have is the x and x and y is reversed. Now I'm wondering if I can switch this around easily. Okay, there's no real easy way to switch it. So instead, what I'm going to do is just copy the data over here and put it and put it in the right order. Okay, so I'll just copy that data there, and we'll put this data here. Okay, and then I want to format this all in dollars so it shows up that way on our screen. So now we're going to test labor cost versus number of charters. So I'm going to call this uh, labor cost. I'll abbreviate it, and this will be number of charters. And uh, let me just center that. Now I'm going to highlight that with those titles, and I think Excel will know what to do. Once again, I'm going to go to the Insert menu. This time I'm not going to show it, and hit Scatter Diagram. And now we will get the X and Y showing up where we wanted them. And I'll just put this over here for now so you can see it. Okay, so I don't have to move it down the screen. Okay, now there's our labor dollars on one side, and um, our number of charters on the number of charters on the x-axis, labor dollars on the y. I'm going to right-click and hit Add a trend line, and you'll get this little pop-up, and then I'm going to say display the equation on the chart. Now really that's all we need, but I also like to know the R-squared value, which gives us some measure of how well our data uh, fit the line. And I'm going to hit close, and now we've got the formula right there. And by the way, that's the answer. That Y equals 271.15 plus 6329 is our answer. Okay, um, what that's telling us, and I got, I got to try to move this away so it won't, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, let me see if I can move this. I don't want to move, huh? Here, why don't we bolt it then? There, yeah. Now you can see it, see it a little bit better. If I can move it just a little bit. Good. Now it's not hitting the line. Okay, what that's telling us is the cost function is equal to $271.15 plus a fixed cost of 6329.8. Okay, now, in addition to that, 
Let me show you how you could how you could get derive the solution using the formulas for least squares. Okay, now what I've done is I've dropped in the author's solutions and you'll see that they came up with 6327 plus 271.18 by you know, mul multiplying the x times the y and squaring it and using the formula, right? So you can certainly use uh, the mathematics to solve it this way, but Excel is doing that under the curtains for you. So 6327 plus 271.18, and we came up with 6329.8, slightly different, plus 271.15. So um, I think the difference may be due to uh, rounding, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, both of those are correct. Okay, now I'm going to show you one other way. Excel can also solve this formula using some statistical functions. So you could type in equals, go up to the formula bar, hit equals, you get this pop-up screen. Uh, now it defaulted to st statistics because that was what I was on. It normally will just appear to what was most recently used. But you could go to statistics and then pick, pick a formula called intercept. I'll type I to bring it up. Now, it says what are the known Y's. And the known Y's are um, these values right here. And I also have it copied here and here, but we can pull it from here. And then it says what are the known X's. Well, we're basing it on um, uh, these numbers, these independent variables, right? drop those in and it says calculate at the point at which a line will intersect the y basis we hit that and I get 6329.84 which is exactly the fixed number there and if you wanted to know the variable portion you could again go up here to the statistical and use I think it's LIN uh, I gotta remember the name of it line estimate Okay, returns the statistics about the line estimate. And it too uses linear regression, and we will drop in the y's and then the x's. Okay. Um, if we knew the constant, we could drop it in, right? We could drop in that, and we should come up with the right answer uh, 271.14. But normally, I don't even think you need that. Yeah, I think it's coming up with it either way. Um, it's equaling 271.14, and if we take it out, it's using linear regression to calculate it anyway. So you could leave it off. And if I format that, I get 271.15, exactly the same as my number there. Okay? So now, if we wanted to tackle um, uh, the other approach, let's, let's um, by the way, let me label this. This would be the intercept fixed costs and this is the variable cost per unit okay and I could stretch that out so you can read that and both of those are in dollars so you could do it that way um, and not only is that the variable cost per unit it's it's the uh, let me do this consistency line est function estimate of a line if you will Okay, now you've noticed the screen has changed a little bit, and I'm going to just quickly show how we would look at gross receipts just using the formula approach. Uh, you could still use um, the graphing approach with an XY graph, and you cert certainly can, uh, can use uh, the formula approach by hand, but I'm just going to use Excel's formula approach. So I dropped in gross receipts, only this time I multiply them by 1,000 just so our dollars come out in the same unit of measure, which is whole dollars. And then we change the formula to reference the right sale cells using the intercept function, right? So let me click up here so you can see that. So we put the B25, which is our labor cost, and then the known X's, which is the gross receipts. And we determine that the fixed portion of this function is $5,393.86 and then the line estimate again I'll bring this down um, we put the no known Y's and the known X's again the same range and it's telling us that 
um, for every gross receipt used as a predictor of labor cost, um, 24 cents will go to help predict how much additional labor cost we would need um, based on the data we've collected. Okay, and then here's the author's solution of how you would do it using the formula, right? You would take x and y and multiply them and then square it and then go through the statistical formulas of summing them according um, uh, to the least squares formula and you come up with 5405 and 23.5 cents which was, um, I'll slide up here, you know, very similar, and let me move this out of the way, to what we came, you know, just rounding difference essentially. And that takes care of this problem on how to do um, least squares using two different ways, using Excel or using the formula approach. Thanks, everyone.